Oh, YouTube. How I've missed you. Maybe a little, kinda, sorta. Anyway, it's been forever since I've actually made a video. This time I've got a double shot. So Anycubic sent me a whole bunch of new stuff and uh, these are gonna be, this is gonna be a, a double shot, like I said. This is the Anycubic Photon Mono and the Anycubic Photon Mono X. Stay tuned. I'm back. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's been months since I've made a video. Uh, there's been a lot of reasons for that. Obviously, um, COVID, yeah, that's a thing. Um, and I I'm not gonna lie, I got sick. So I've been sick for quite a while and I'm finally feeling better. So um, I did this, I'm, I'm, this video is kind of a non-standard format for me. Normally I will take the machine, I'll unbox it, or at least show you all the parts unboxed. I did this kind of backwards. So what I did is because I wasn't feeling well, I set up a bunch of prints and I ran a bunch of prints and uh, you can see them right here. And I'm gonna kind of talk about the printers a little bit and show you the prints. I'll do some close up shots so you can see them. Uh, don't mind some of my shoddy supporting. Those are my fault, not the printers. Um, at the end of the day, I'm gonna say both of these printers are awesome. Um, they're much faster. They, uh, they're, I wanna say easier to level and they stay level. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, before I talk about that though, you may be wondering why I'm surrounded by robots and you probably can't see all of them because I don't, I didn't zoom out wide enough. Um, this is actually a video that I'm gonna be doing shortly. Uh, there is a, a modeler who just needs some recognition. Um, any of you who know me know I am a Transformers addict, I am a nerd, and all my machines are named after Autobots or Decepticons. Um, there is a, a modeler out of uh, Indonesia and his name is uh, Reza, and he goes by Toymaker 3D. It's T-O-Y-M-A-K-R 3D. He makes these most unbelievable models, as you can see around me. I don't know if you can see all the way over here, starting at Starscream, running up behind me, over here. They run all the way over to my Mega X. Um, and this is only some of them. I have more in the other room. I have a whole cabinet full of them. Now, granted, a lot of these I've printed at 150% of the actual size, except Devastator, which is actually just 100% normal size. And B is 100%. There's another B over here if you can see them. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go really, uh, and, and really show off his work because he deserves it. He's on Patreon. Um, and for the little, I think he's at like a dollar or two dollars a month. It's amazing. Um, a lot of these models you can download free from his website. Some of them are paid. Um, but yeah, I'll get into that in another video. But I just wanted to point out and the fact that he designs every single one of these on an iPad. He doesn't even use a computer. He does them all on an iPad and they are super articulated. So they don't transform. Anyway, let's get back to what we're talking about. Let's talk about the Photon Mono and the Photon Mono X. So I do have a cheat sheet just to kind of make it a little bit easier because I'm still, yeah, a little bit under the weather. As you can see, I'm probably see I'm in my sweats. Um, so anyway, let's talk about the Mono first. So. This one has the 2.8 inch touch screen, uh, 2.8 inch touch screen. It has uh, the, it's a 2K screen in here. It's not a 4K screen where this is a 4K screen. So it's a 2K screen. Uh, it's 2560 by 1620. You can do uh, 0 0.01 millimeter resolution on this, uh, printing on the Z. And uh, the build volume is 130 by 82 by 165. So it's a little tiny bit bigger than the regular Photon or Photon S. Um, I don't have the Mono SE yet, so I, I believe the build volume is, again, slightly bigger than this one. Um, and then, uh, let's see, so yeah, so it's a six inch screen diagonal, obviously. Um, you've got the build volume already. And the, the monochrome screen, I gotta say, it really, really 
really speeds up the printing. Uh, it's pretty much twice as fast. So that's really fantastic. So let's move on to the Mono X. This has a three and a half inch touchscreen down here. Same access resolution, Z is uh, 0 0.01, and you can go up to 0 0.15, uh, same on this one. And uh, this, this one actually can print a little bit faster. This can actually print 60 millimeters an hour, and this one can print 50 millimeters an hour. So I mean, that's fast for a resin machine. Um, this one has an 8.9 inch diagonal screen, so it's basically the size of a smaller iPad, not a mini, but a smaller iPad, um, not the Pro. And then uh, it is, uh, let's see, so it's 192 by 120 by 250 which is 250 is really tall. And you know, just for the record, any of these models that I printed here with the exception of Starscream, these are all printed uh, in one shot. There's no pieces added. Starscream obviously had to be done a little bit differently. Um, so there's that. And this is a 4K monochrome screen. So let's talk a little bit about the build and the design. Now these, as I said, I've already run them. I've already used them. There's resin in them. Um, they are, I'm not going to show you the leveling because I've showed leveling on multiple other videos. If you really, really want a leveling video and a setup video, post a comment and I'll, I'll make one. Um, but I don't, I don't really think it's required. What I do really like, um, they're nice and solid metal. Um, the whole base is solid metal. The, uh, the resin vat, now they all come with a little pour spout here. Um, I know it's supposed to be spun around and there are so this one has lines inside that show you how much resin you have They're much easier to, to lock down with just these two little screws right here Yeah, they do screw on a little bit differently uh, if you go back and you if you saw my video on the photon zero That's how these beds also attach so they slide on and off like this and they just lock on It does make it slightly challenging if you're using the original wash and care because this doesn't actually lock on I kind of rigged up a little thing with a screw and it works great um, so this machine has a single linear rail on the Z, whereas the Mono X has a dual linear rail on the Z. Let me pop the cover off this one so you can see. I'll pop that down here. So there's that. They both come, and they come with everything. And I didn't do an, like I said, I didn't do an unboxing. They come with everything that you would expect any cubic machines to come with. They come with all the tools. They come with extra screws. They come with masks and rubber gloves um, and uh, filters to filter your resin if you're going to pour it back in the bottle or I pour it in a different bottle. Um, it, it comes with everything you expect it to come with, except extra FEP which surprised me. So none of these come with extra FEP anymore. So you're kind of on your own for that. Um, so differences. So this bed is still horribly dirty because um, I just finished this print this morning. Um, so differences, single linear rail, this one, dual linear rail. Um, they both, I have not had any issues at all. I haven't seen any binding. I haven't seen anything. They come pre-lubed, obviously. Um, everything's been working fantastic. Same thing, this bed, uh, same thing on screws. Uh, it's a little tough to use the smaller wash and cure machine with this, but I've actually found it's pretty useful when you, you, you can take the bed off here and you can clean the bed and wash the bed in the wash and cure machine if you just stand it up vertically, it's pretty cool. Um, so that way you get a nice clean bed. Um, difference, big difference, there's a little antenna right here. And this also uh, comes on the Mono SE. Uh, they actually are Wi-Fi capable, but it's not what you expect in Wi-Fi capable. When I heard Wi-Fi capable, I was like, oh great, it's kind of like Octoprint, so I can send a file and it will go. It's not how it works. It's actually so you can start and monitor prints, so you can do that. You basically sync this up to your Wi-Fi network at home. You use the app on your iPhone or your Android, and uh, I use it on my iPhone and it shows you different options. You can start prints, you can stop prints. Um, so it's still pretty useful. Um, I wish it would do more. Hopefully it will do more in the future. Uh, let's see, so other than that, like I said, the speed is fantastic. They're actually very quiet. I did a lot of work where I was on the phone with people and I had this machine sitting right behind me printing. Couldn't hear it, so it's not loud. Um, so that's, you know, my overall views. 
things I wish were different. I actually do wish that they didn't have the completely removable cover, although it is really, really nice to be able to watch the prints. And that's a huge thing. Um, there is a setting in the software that you can uh, disable the printing because um, these both, they have little tags on the back of them. So the machine actually has a sensor back here so it knows when the lid is on and when it's off. Um, so there's a setting you can enable or disable. If you lift the lid, it will stop printing. It will just pause. And then as soon as you put the lid back on, it will resume. I tried it. It works. Um, so there's that. Any other magical things I need to talk about on here? No? Great. Let's have a sip of coffee. I'm surprised Senor Tyrion isn't here. He's been kind of up my butt all day. So he's, he's feeling a little sick too. So let's talk about some models. So on this one, so on the mono, I printed in gray versus black on the mono, uh, the mono X, just so I could, never would confuse the models. Um, so I did, of course, the standard Anycubic uh, test print on this one. I didn't even do it on this guy. Um, so I did the test print and the test print came out beautiful. Sliced beautifully, it was great. Then I went to my good old favorite Voltron ring. I don't remember who modeled this. I found this on my mini factory years ago. And I pretty much test every resin printer I have by printing this. And I have to say, this one came out by far the best out of any of these that I've printed on any of my Wanhao machines, even my other any Cubic machines uh, and the Creality machines. I don't have an, any Elegoo machines. I don't have uh, Frozen's and I don't have um, the Piopoli ones. So I don't have those, but I will say this Voltron ring came out the absolute best out of any print on any resin printer I've done it on. And there's been a lot. There's been at least seven or eight. Um, I only wish I remembered to resize it properly to fit my ring finger because I forgot. But it fits my pinky. Um, next up, I also forget where I got this model. I don't remember if this is game body or if this is uh, Jeff at Hex 3D. I think it's Game Body, but I'm not sure. Anyway, um, Darth Vader came out gorgeous. Uh, bottom could be a little bit more flat. That was kind of my fault too, because I didn't actually print it flat. I did print it up supported. These guys here, these are from Jeff at Hex 3D. So this is his alien mask, which is crazy detailed. And I'll, I'll do close-ups of all these too. Um, this came out amazing, except for the kind of stinky support job I did right here. And then we have Superman holding up a car. So this is printed in two pieces, um, and he makes it so it slots together at the hands, so they're just glued together. But this is scaled way, way down from the original size. I could have probably printed it full size on this, but I, had, I started this one first, so that's where I did. Um, so this came out really, really great. Um, again, very, I didn't have to use a ton of supports on this and I was really happy with the way this came out. All right, then moving over here after I did, I did the RERF, the RERF print on this and I did calibrate the resin. Um, and this is any cubic resin, by the way, this is any cubic gray, any cubic black. And the first print I actually did was Illidan because I'm kind of a Warcraft fanatic. I've been playing it since the very, I mean, I've read a lot of the books, but I've been playing the game since the very, very first game came out. Um, some of you guys may not even have been alive. Um, so this is Illidan and I love him and I've always printed him on smaller machines. So it's nice to have him printed a little bit bigger uh, and he came out fantastic. Uh, this is a game body, I think. And then we'll move to another game body. This is the second one I did. So I did Optimus and then this is, I've always wanted to print this really big. It's never been able to fit on a smaller printer. So I was really happy to be able to print this. And with the exception again of a crappy support job I did right over here on his tire, he came out amazing. 
Uh, I was really, really happy with the quality on this. And then uh, over to Starscream, this is actually uh, one of Steve Newman's models, one of his Transformers, and he does an amazing job with these. Um, again, there's a few support glitches, let's say, my fault. Uh, but this came out fantastic. So this is printed in multiple pieces. So we've got his base is one piece, his body is entirely one piece with the exception of the wings, and then both of the tail wings are added on afterwards. But other than that, um, the entire body is one piece, including the guns. And then uh, just this morning, like I said, so Wexter just released Jam and Jack. So I thought, hey, I gotta run a new Wexter model. It's been a little bit. So Jam and Jack came out fantastic. I think I'm actually gonna take uh, these black ones and I'm gonna do like a, um, like a gray or a silver rub on them and uh, really get to show the detail in them. So yeah, there they are. Like I said, I really am impressed with these. I'm really excited again, and I've, I've been looking. It's been funny. I've actually been looking for new models to print just because, you know, a lot of times I print the same old, same old, and I really wanted to try something new and different, which is why I was really excited. I actually just talked to Steve the other day, and I got, um, you know, all of his Transformer models. Um, and uh, when I saw Vedran uh, posted this a couple days ago or yesterday, yesterday, um, I immediately grabbed it because I knew I had to print it. Um, so yeah, but overall, I am super impressed. I really like these machines. Like I said, the only thing I wish is they weren't completely, you know, the, the lids kind of stayed on because that would make it slightly easier. Um, in certain aspects, I'm kind of cramped for space at this point because I have so many printers that taking off a lid and having to put it somewhere else while I'm in the middle of doing three things is a little tough. So I wish that was different, but if that's my biggest complaint, <laughs> they did a, a pretty good job. Um, software right now is uh, Photon Slicer. So you can use Photon Slicer, and to be honest, I've been using it, and I used it to slice all of these, and I haven't had any problems. I know some people are like, well, I wanna use G2, or I wanna use something else. Um, I have been in touch with Anycubic about that, and I believe, don't quote me, I'm not promising anything, but I believe they are going to make the file format available uh, for Chi2, so for you guys who love to use that, that's great. Um, I do know that Lychee Slicer from Mango does have, um, their beta does have these printers and their profiles in there already, so you know if you don't like the slicer software that's fine pick something else just like anything else um but i'm really happy with photon slicer it's been working great for me i can store all my profiles all my resin profiles um and i have no problems so that's about all i got on these two guys i do have some more exciting news i am going to be shooting another video probably later today depending on how busy i get um I've had a pet project going for a while now and it's taken me a while to get it complete and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Let's just say it has to do with the transformer and something I designed myself and because uh, I don't think I've ever actually kind of shown off anything I've done. So I'm going to do that. So I'm really, really excited to show you guys this. I haven't built it, I haven't done anything. I have been waiting to do the video and it's been killing me because I have the parts ready and they're sitting in the other room. And uh, anyway, so if you got this far, thank you. Um, thank you, Anycubic, again, for sending me these guys. Uh, I do have some other, like I said, Anycubic machines here, and I think there's more stuff on the way. Um, so I will have some more videos coming again. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for sticking it out. I hope everybody stays safe. Um, I hope everybody is safe. And, uh, I, you know, another reason why I probably haven't been on so much is I've been a little too involved in politics. And uh, that's very unlike me. Anybody who's friends with me on Facebook will very clearly know that. Um, 
but yeah, I've been pretty rough, you know. I mean, I do live in Canada, but I am a U.S. citizen, and what happens there matters to me, so I'm not going to state my opinion here because some of you will like it and some of you will hate it, and that's totally cool. You can have your own opinion, but anyway, I really digress there. I'm going to stop. I'm going to shoot some shots of all these guys and put this video together for you guys so you can see it today. Um, I know Joel did a live stream last night with, with these two guys, and I think he had the, well, I know he, well, yeah, he had the, uh, the Mono SE. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, if I remember when I do this, I'll post a link to it in, uh, in the, the, the thing down there. And please don't forget to click the like button wherever it might be on your screen. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe it'll be fun you can see my cool project i'm gonna post anyway i'm out this is chris versus 3d and uh time never showed up anyway take it easy peace